Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And we're in a little mini series here. This is part three of a little mini series that I'm calling Balanced Incomplete Block Design. And we're going to drive the least squares estimates for the beta parameters in this case. Well, the, the tau and the beta parameters, and you'll see in a second. But before we start, I have to go through three reminders that we're going to reference to but not prove in this video. So the, the normal equations, and I have a video called uh, Multiple Linear Regression Least Squares Estimates where we derive this. So we have a uh, linear model, and then we look at the squared errors, and then we take partial derivatives associated with the betas, and it comes out to this, and we set it equal to zero, you know, add that to the other side, divide by two, and we get these. And these are what's called the normal equations. And then to solve for beta, you know, if X is full column rank, you just take the inverse over. If it's not, you have to take a generalized inverse. Anyway, that's just a reminder. Now, the next one, the fourth video in this playlist, and I'm calling it least squares estimated or beta. If we look at this linear model, the least squares estimate for beta, remember we're in the setting where X is not full column rank, so we don't get a unique estimate for the least squares estimate of beta. But we did prove that it has to set, satisfy this, and this is where M is the perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of X, defined like this. And what's interesting, even though the least squares estimate for beta is not unique, this is unique, and, and it's the fitted model, which is kind of a nice property to have. The third property that we're going to reference but not prove is if we have a linear model, but then we partition the beta parameters into say beta 1 and beta 2. That means we partition the, the design matrix. So when we do this multiplication, we get this. Now, if the column spaces of x1 and x2 are orthogonal, then to find the least squares estimates for the beta 1 parameters, remember this is a vector, we don't need this information here. We can just straight go to finding the least squares estimate for beta 1. And of course, we're using this property that it has to satisfy this, where M is the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of X1. And, this, and it's the same for beta 2. We don't need this information. They're orthogonal to each other. So this adds no information in estimating beta 2. So, but beta 2, the least squares estimate for beta 2 must satisfy this you know, where, where M2 is the permitting the projects makes onto that column space of X2. Okay. So now let's just jump right into the balanced incomplete block design. And I'm going to really have to pass you off to parts one and two where we develop this model. So it started out with just Y equals X beta plus air. And then we added a well-chosen zero and then we manipulated a little bit and we came up with this model. It's 100% equivalent, but we're going to use this when we drive the least squares estimates. So now, this going from this step to this step is just matrix multiplication, right? So if we multiply this into this, we, we get it back. So nothing new here. But now we're in the, so Y equals, and if you, in air quotes, think of this as X. And this is the beta parameter plus air. So, right, so we're in kind of this setting. But, you know, this is our, our new x, right? So now the normal equations is x prime x, you know, beta, and these are all, in, you know, air quotes, <laughs> x prime y. But with our new x, our new beta, right? So nothing new. Now we're going to multiply this together. And remember, these column spaces are orthogonal. So we're going to get some zeros. And then we'll multiply that y into this. And, and we get this. So this is a matrix, the unknown vector parameter. You know, this was x transpose y. Now when we multiply this out, we get this is equal to this piece. And then... When we multiply this out, this times this is equal to that. Now, to solve for t 
tau's, the least squares estimate for tau, right? Because that's what we're doing. We developed the normal equation. We have to take the generalized inverse of this, which moves it over. And that's not a 100% accurate way to describe it, but that's kind of the way I think about it. You know, if this were full, uh, full rank matrix, we just take the inverse, but and then it, but we have to take the generalized inverse, and then everything else moves down, and that's the least squares estimate for tau, and that's it. And we're going to use this in in upcoming videos. Now, to find the least squares estimate for alpha, which contains the original betas in our model we're going to have to refer back to parts B and C in the reminder section on page 1. Now remember that for alpha to be a least squares estimate, it has to satisfy this piece here. So X beta and M beta Y. And, and you can go back and look at beta, part B and C on this page. Now, the original model that we developed, it kind of started like this, right? So if we multiply this x tau tau into those, then we get this quantity minus the same quantity, so it's zero. And we're and then we're left with x beta beta and x tau tau. So I mean that's the original model. But then so this piece is this, but then this we transformed it into x beta gamma. I mean alpha. Okay, so now we go, and then we come down to find the least squares estimates of all these parameters. We just stick them in. You know, that's it. So we assume we know them. And so that's what we get here. Now we can subtract this piece from both sides. And we're left with this. Now if we, if we subtract that to the other side, and of course swap the equation, we get this. Now... The least squares estimate for alpha must satisfy this, so we can plug this in for here, and that's what we do. Then we can right or left factor out an m beta, and we're left with this. So the least squares estimate for the beta parameters must satisfy this equation, okay? and, and, and we're actually finished. But sometimes it's advantageous to write out what the least squares estimate for tau is, right? So we have. So if we multiply that in, we get this, and then we multiply that in, we get this, and then the least squares estimate for tau is this. So the least squares estimate for beta must satisfy this equation. This is the fitted model for x beta. Okay, well that's all I have for this video, and we will continue on in the next video. Hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.